Hello, I'm Jason Skill, this is Painting with Skill, and this is lesson 19. In 19 what we're doing is we're going to look at using kitchen roll. This is like a, a blue roll. Um, one of the things you need to consider with uh, kitchen roll is that a lot of people like to be neat with it. So the idea is that you're trying to take paint off. So you'll find that people like to sort of fold it and make it into nice neat little patches and then lift with it. The only trouble with that is what you end up lifting is the shape of the, obviously the imprint of here which is like kind of little um, squares and that, that will be lifted and something of that uh, texture will come off but also you'll just end with a nice little neat pad that lifts the paint off. The idea of what uh, I'm going to show you is that what you're doing is trying to probably crunch the paper more. You're trying to make this beautiful shapes and textures that you get when you crunch the paper lifted off the page. So let's just do this very simply so that we're going to do a little bit of very basic wetting wet. So I'm going to wet systematically just like I was describing in the last lesson from the top to the bottom and we're going to take some watery paint again let's just take that French ultramarine that I was using last lesson and some of this sepia together and we're going to just put it on and it's reasonably wet so this should run down the page so let's just watch the wonders of water movement now if I was just making my nice little neat pad as people will do and I wanted to make an exciting shape in the cloud and I do it with that I end up with a bit of a brick and as you can see you're ending up with these sort of lines of the paper coming out now all papers have a different sort of textural design so if you're trying to make little clouds and using a neat neat little pad it's difficult to do anything particularly creative compare that to basically if I crunch it up and then I place a bit of the crunched up texture in here, it's a broken shape. So a lot of the time with the, uh, you know, cloud forms, you're not necessarily wanting a neat shape, but a broken shape. So here we have this sort of running down effect and you might think, well I like that, but I don't like that bit. So you're lifting it, but you're not necessarily want to lift it as a neat pad with a straight edge. You're wanting to lift it perhaps with a broken edge so that it might look more like a cloud form. So I might take this shape and make it more interesting relying on this strange broken shape in the, that I've got with the paper. So let's wet down a little bit further down the page. Again the same routine from the top going down systematically as you're wetting. I'm also not pushing this hard down. If you do that you basically push a lot of water out and you find it runs. So don't be pushing the, the wash brush hard against the surface. Just let it glide against the surface if you can. But still cover everything. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to make just fill it with wet and wet. Surface is wet, paint's wet, I'm just covering the area. Now I quite like the idea of making a cloud shape in this uh, and I want to follow what we've been doing with this system of having a bigger cloud then a smaller one and a smaller one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift, we're using the blotting paper, we're using the same idea as our stocks guys. So here I'm coming along the top and I'm holding this, so this sort of lovely shape here I want to come out. So I put the whole of this down and then I lift it off. So there's my big cloud shape. And then I might want a thinner cloud shape. Now if you're struggling because this is too big, what you could do is rip this in half. So I'm looking at what is the perforated edge and I've ripped it in half. And then I might crunch it up a bit to make sure that it's uh, going to make a nice crumpled effect. And then I'll hold it and I've made it thinner. So I'm thinking about the shape that I'm actually going to lift. And that's supposed to only come to here. And then at this end I'm trying to make it thin so it ends a little bit of a tail. I made that one and then the last one if you remember was even thinner so I might think well actually I need this even thinner why don't I rip it again and then when I offer it crunched I might need to almost roll it so I might think well it's difficult to crunch at that side so I'll just literally roll it and hold it a little bit twisted hold it at both ends so it doesn't untwist and then I'll just rub my finger along it and then I've got my larger cloud my slightly smaller cloud and then the thinner cloud so I haven't actually really painted a cloud as much as lifted the cloud. So you might find that the uh, 
The wet and wet is great for just putting the colour on quite quickly and then the blotting out and that's what this is referred to often is that you're blotting out, you're blotting out the colour uh, lifting it out by blotting with cloth um, or paper is a very creative and interesting way to paint and that part of the, the beauty and the fun of it is you never quite know what's going to happen you're hoping that something exciting will take place because of the shapes that you've got here now what of, often happens you, you'll show uh, people this and then they will follow what you've said wetting it carefully and then they will put the colour down the page So let's put some of that colour down the page, just so we'll fill it. Just have the fun of filling that space with some colour and see what it looks like. And the neat people, right, those that like to be neat and tidy, will find it extremely difficult to control themselves. So they may think, oh, I need a smaller bit. I'll take this and I'll rip it down. And then they will nicely fold it into the shape. And you see them trying to be just hint creative but still putting on a nice neat pad and then they leave a space and then they'll put like a nice neat pad and a nice neat pad and they often look like little sheep okay or just like a, a set shape that they repeat so try as I said to think about this as a creative thing that you're twisting and turning and creating with if you do insist on putting it down little pieces then think about perhaps moving your hands so maybe you'll crunch it a little bit and then you put it down and then you maybe shift the angle of your hand and place it and move across that will make a different effect but as I say it's probably better a lot of the time to think right the way across it so yes you could follow the, the, the stock sky format but it might be that you're better to just think right actually I'm just going to dare to hold that and put that all the way across in a line it's often more creative to make the stuff look like it's basically flowing across the page in the form of a sky now one of the effects that um, a lot of people enjoy doing although it's quite tricky I have to say unless you're a little bit practiced with it is that you you paint with sort of you paint your wet and wet on as I've done here put the page wet it just get used to the flowing of the paint down the page and then you take a sheet and you rip it from one end to the other and then you turn it so what I'm doing here is I'm holding that with my hand and I'm turning and I see I sort of nip it turn it nip it and turn it nip it turn it, nip it, turn it. some people find it easier to sort of go like this and hold that maybe and spin it this way not actually a very pleasant feeling making sausages I have to say but the, the idea is that you're making thin sausages and then one thing that I've tried to do over the years is to basically put the sausage bit in my hand and make it come out so that I can pull it like some kind of magician pulling out a uh, hanky from his sleeve that seems to never end I hold that and I hold this end of it and I put my finger here and I basically can draw across and pull it up and if you first of all just practice straight lines that way that's quite a good way of kind of steering and then what you can try is maybe slightly curving the line it's harder to do put it on you curve and lift now you'll find after a while that this will become absolutely sodden as it does if you just keep repeatedly placing the kitchen roll on the page so when you've done enough and it's uh, become dirty use either the clean bit that's left or make another sausage if you're going to do a number of sausages uh, that you're going to need in your picture making then make sure that you've uh, done that before you've put the wet and wet on otherwise you'll find that uh, it'll start to dry on you and you'll be there sitting there making sausages with the kitchen roll and the whole thing's dried out you've, you've missed the boat so prep you've got to prep this sort of thing ahead of time make sure you've got the kitchen roll make sure you've crunched up all that stuff before you put it on the page because if it's warm you don't have that long to do some of these effects okay I will take this off now and we'll stick another piece of paper on 
but I think with the magic of uh, camera we'll just let that happen with a lovely wipe between one or the other rather than you watch me do it. Okay there, as if by magic we now have a new piece of paper on the page and we're ready to go again. Now I want to want to show you is I'm going to attempt to do we'll do a, a big one. I'm going to wet a larger area so let's say you're getting a little bit more daring and really when you've done the teeny stuff for a while you might want to work your way up to perhaps say a quarter sheet about something about the size of A4. You'll find it quite difficult to move beyond A4. It's a, quite a big area to cover. Uh, so moving up to say the equivalent to say A3 or half imperial and then full imperial takes a little bit more uh, time and skill. So keep yourself at either A4 or down or quarter sheet and down. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to do uh, a little bit of sort of paint and I'm going to try and paint a sky using our method of large cloud at the top just like we did in the episodes about stock skies and then I'm going to come in with a slightly smaller one underneath and then the next one underneath that. Now it's not that exciting looking so I want to basically tart that up using the kitchen roll. So what I might do is think well these edges are alright but what if I maybe make some marks into those so that some of it registers and some of it doesn't. So I'm playing with it trying to make the best of what happens. So if a bit you think, oh, that looks nice, where it's gone kind of more furry, hairy edged, you might want to leave that bit. And other bits, you might think, yeah, I could, maybe I could make some little curved marks or, or experimental just touching marks. The, the, how you touch the paper down will make a big difference. If you press hard down and hold it, most will come off. If you just touch it, a tiny amount will come off. Now that's got a bit dirty, so I might get another bit holding at the length. I think, well, actually, I want the gap between here and here to reappear. So I might use the kitchen roll to lift that out. And maybe the top's a bit of a sausage, so I don't really like that. I'm going to make that come in, top and bottom, and alter that a touch. And maybe make this little mark there. I could use a sort of a little bit of a sausage. Now, instead of doing a whole sausage, I might just twist that end of it and hold the rest and maybe pull until that goes into that shape. And here I might do a little bit of sort of hints of sausage. I haven't actually made a sausage. All I'm doing is making it thinner and pulling my hand through to make that work. Get rid of that bit. And the more times you do this kind of thing, the more um, creative you, uh, you can become, the more accomplished you become. But a word of warning, what you do is, like many effects when you first do it, it becomes almost addictive. So you just, the feeling of blotting it off and what happens, you think, oh, it's fabulous. I just keep going, I keep going, it'll be lovely. And actually, you look around and you've actually taken virtually everything off because you've, had, you've got completely carried away and you're blotting everything. So try to look at it and think, I need to leave some of this stuff. Uh, you know, it's a mark. It's not going to be the, the answer to all my painting ills by blotting everything off. So try to keep yourself in check when you're doing it. Now, if we come down, and I illustrate, let's just maybe come up and down a bit and we're going to have some sort of hills there. Now, a little bit more paint, drop down, maybe make it a tiny bit darker. You can see that that doesn't look half bad for a basics of a sort of a sky with a few little bits of blotting. Now I've got this land, what about we start to experiment with a bit of blotting on there? So maybe I could think, well I wonder which way down the, maybe they're snow capped these hills. So you do a little bit of blotting, I'm going up and down, and I'm going to kind of go down, then up a bit, and maybe down a bit on here. Maybe the other bit that aims touches there. And perhaps I'll use my kind of sausage idea to make, maybe there's a lake or something in front of here. And I think, well, what if I hold that and make that go in a reasonably straight line there? Right, and then I maybe pull out some of that in a reasonably straight line. I'm pushing a bit harder there, so that might look quite lake-like. i just pull that hair out. Now, the other thing if you remember about the wet and wet 
is that you're trying to make the paint not always be super damp. So I'm just going to take, take the weight off this. I just feel like I need a little bit more paint there. So I'm just going to deepen this a little bit more sticky and think, you know, it could just do with being a bit darker in the foreground. So wet into wet using the stickier paint. I'll just go back here and maybe tidy up without a touch in that area there. A little bit more dark. Maybe a bit of dark over here, see if that's a little bit more weight of colour, weight of tone, down in the valley. And you can see how quite quickly the wet and wet can make some rather wonderful effects that look like you've done an awful lot of work when actually you haven't. Uh, and it's a lovely kind of soft focus effect. And it probably only needs a couple of little birds or something in here to make it look like it's reasonably believable as a little quick landscape. It's quite a good little trick to do maybe a little bit of bird in or a hint of a posts are good. Let's put a couple of posts in. It just draws your attention. Maybe you want to make one slightly taller than the other. It's just something that your eye focuses on against all of this soft wet in wet effect. In the next video what we'll do is we'll have a look at pulling a lot of this stuff together and we'll try and do a little bit of a beach scene uh, which is going to be wet and wet and wet on dry and, and, and kind of the culmination of many of the things that we've been looking at in the previous uh, videos.